Hi, I'm Loretta Bush, President and CEO for Authority Health. On behalf of Authority Health, I'd like to wish you a happy new year. Now, January for many people is a time of renewal, reflection, restoration, and it's also the month where we acknowledge mental wellness. Now, during that time, many people think about such things as really uh, resolving to be a better person. They may decide to become more physically fit, more mentally fit, spend more time with family, read books, journal, a whole host of things that really can promote and build into mental wellness. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And here with me to really explore and talk about that topic is Mr. Robert Warmack. And he is a Detroit-based counselor. He is the president and CEO of LEC. Now, LEC, I love the name of his company. Always have from the moment I met him. It stands for Love, Empathy, and compassion. Yes. Robert, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. Glad to be here, Loretta. All right. So we're going to jump right in. So now, um, mental wellness is not a topic that we hear a lot about. Most of the time, people are talking about mental illness. So when I looked at it uh, this month and that it focused on mental wellness, I went to the World Health Organization and it said that mental wellness is defined as a state of well-being in which a individual realizes his or her own abilities, which I liked, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Now, in light of that, Robert, um, I'd like to hear your perspective on that. Does that resonate with you? Is there something different that you think about when you think about mental wellness? So either in line with that or a different perspective, what do you think about mental wellness? And more importantly, what can some of the things we can do to obtain it? <clears throat> I May mean, I generally agree with that, uh, with that definition. Um, and even, um, even from a more simplistic uh, definition, I think of mental, well mental wellness for each individual as I just love me for me. And I love me um, as I am. And you know, the caveat to that is, <clears throat> and I always share um, that I'm content in who I am in the now. Doesn't mean that I don't want to get a degree. I don't want to get a higher paying job. I don't want to do all these future, you know, um, accomplish all these future things. Mm -hmm. But even if I don't, what, well, during my journey, I'm still content with loving me as I am today without the degree, without the expensive car. Mm -hmm. So I think a well-being is being okay um, with loving me as I am today and being okay with it, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, and I think that that's the piece that um, often isn't talked about and sometimes people are confused by because it doesn't mean that you don't set goals and aspirations just because you're okay with who you are today. Absolutely. And um, I know I was having a conversation with someone who really elaborated on that. And I shouldn't say just someone, it was a pastor who talked about that as he was counseling, many times he found that the source of people's discontent was the fact that they were just truly unhappy with their station in life as it was, uh, that they couldn't find any contentment with who they were today. And he was expressing exactly what you were saying. But to be content with who you are today doesn't mean that you're not striving for something better tomorrow. Absolutely. And, I, and, and a major part, you know, um, the challenge is that um, even with the, uh, with the exponential growth of um, social media, we, uh, we just give away our self-image to what 
the media says, what, what the internet says, what IG says, what this person says. Right. And we've moved further, further away to what our own definition of who we are. Mm -hmm. So that means that it's a moving target you'll never hit because, you know, one day someone can say, oh, you know, Robert, you have a nice suit on. Right. Um, then if I'm dependent on that, the next day they may be in a bad mood or you don't look nice today. So. So if I'm dependent on something outside of myself to affirm myself, you know, it would always it will always be a moving target and you'll never be able to reach that place of uh consistent uh mental wellness. But another piece and I use this analogy. If you get a mirror, mm -hmm. right? And re a mirror is a reflection of you but it's it's really not you, not for true. example. Because if you have a mirror and there's a crack in the mirror mm -hmm. and you're looking at it, no matter how much, how you change the angle of that mirror, that crack will still be there. Right. Because that's the mirror's uh, perception or perspective on who you are. But in essence, you don't have a crack on your face. Right. But it's, it's just that mirror's, you know, mm -hmm. reflection of you. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it, trying, allowing yourself to um, be, become enslaved to other people's thoughts of who you are, you'll never be able to uh, achieve that state of, well, as Maslow says, a hierarchy of needs, that self-actualization. Right. Um, because I'm, you know, you'll never reach it because uh, I'm dependent on so many things outside of myself. To outside of myself. Am. So now let me say this. So if we were talking about physical fitness, we tell people, well, you know, you can do push-ups and you can do some, you know, arm twirls and you can do some cardio and all of that to get physically fit. So if we're uh, telling people, you know, how do you get, uh, how do you strengthen yourself in mental wellness? So we know that it's not going to, serve us well if we're letting other people define us, you know, looking in that mirror and seeing that crack or if we're looking at Facebook and I see that Robert has just returned from a fabulous 14 day trip to Greece and I can barely go across town and everything. But so how do you, what would you say to the viewers about how do we start to build ourselves up in mental wellness? Because we know how to be unhealthy, just like how we know how to right. eat bad. We hold, we know how to sit on the couch and not exercise. How do we start to build our mental wellness? Um, in terms of, you know, building your own mental wellness, um, as one, you know, when I'm I've, I've done doing therapy with people, and an approach I. I I utilize with persons when I talk about, you know, esteem and, and self-esteem and building, you know, loving you and the commitment to you and being the best version of yourself is knowing that, um, you know, as I mentioned, mentioned earlier in terms of social media and other people and friends and family, all these things that we look to affirm ourselves is that we are complete you know, and all these other things, you know, complement um, us. So without those complementary um, things, we're still who we are. For example, let's take, and, I, and it's got like, you, you're probably, I mean, not probably, you're a beautiful woman without lipstick, makeup, or all those things. Those things you put on mm -hmm. to complement yes. you. But without mm -hmm. having them on, mm -hmm you can look in the mirror and know that you're a beautiful woman, mm -hmm. woman regardless. Yeah. So part of that is being intentional in, um, um, for example, I was, I, when I, you know, sometimes men and women, but you know, are you okay with going to a movie alone? Yeah. Are you okay with taking yourself out to dinner? Mm -hmm. um, and part of that building that esteem and, and mental wellness is loving yourself as you expect persons to love you and treat you, mm -hmm. then it becomes it becomes natural because it becomes then as as you journey, you know, and I always say about I always talk to people about in my wellness journey, you know, and once I know me, I'm committed to me and I love me, 
you know, I know all those things during my journey that will complement me or not. So if I, um, if I invest in myself in terms of, like I said, a movie or going out to dinner or or spending quiet time, which is part of mindfulness, you know, going going on walks or, or uh, time just to meditate. I mean, meditating, and, and think about all the great things that's happening in the present. Right. You know, um, and if I have to be intentional in doing those things, mm -hmm. and then over period, it, it, it moves from being um, something that you think about, and then it moves to something that becomes a natural part of who you are. Mm -hmm. um, but. And it's not, it's a loaded answer. Um, because there was a lot in there, but I like it. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a loaded. lot in there. Let me, uh, let me just throw this nugget out here. So one of the things that, um, that I've read, and I, I think it probably rings true. Tell me what you think about it. One of the, the, um, the tips or the exercises that is commonly given is to avoid negative self-talk as a, as a way of exercising mental health. And I know many times I find that to be true. You know, it just seems like people are their own worst enemies. We've talked about, you know, other people affirming us or disaffirming us, but many times it is that thing in your own head that says, I'm not good enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm not slim enough, I'm, you know, not smart enough, that wherever it comes from, that negative self-talk, and if we can reverse that and reframe that um, so that we can um, uh, e experience mental wellness. So what do you think about that? Not that things don't happen, but instead of saying, you know, oh, you know, I'm really stupid and I'm a bad person, you know, I can really learn from this experience, and next time I'm gonna, you know, do better. That didn't go as well as I wanted it to, but these are the things that I'm going to do better next time, as opposed to the self-defeating uh, negative talk. And, and I have a, actually, it was a client I had, and, and one term I use is, you know, whatever you feed grows, whatever you starve dies. Mm -hmm. um, so this, the, the individual, you know, we were we were doing therapy, and she talked about how inadequate um, she felt in terms of her body image. Okay. Right. Then I said, you know, then we began to and th that was that self negative talk. Yeah. And it was based off of some of the imagery looking at uh, comparing herself to other persons. Mm -hmm. you know? So I asked her, I said, well, you know, when you go out, I knew the answer to these questions because we had been in therapy. Mm -hmm. I said, when you go out, do men approach you? She said, yes. Mm -hmm. I said, when you go out, are you complimented by, you know, you know, women? You know, she said women compliment her in terms of her dress and, okay. and her appearance. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how she didn't have a problem getting dates, all the things that. So I said, so based on those actual actionable, verifiable, measurable behaviors, mm -hmm. is there a problem with who you are in your image? She said, no. Uh, so she, 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 uh, it's like, almost like confirmation bias, you know. So, you know, her, her core belief system kind of, what you said is at a place of, you know, deficit. So I'm going to find, if I have 10 things that say the opposite, I'm going to latch onto the one to confirm the bias I already have. Mm -hmm. So I try to work with people in terms of my core value system. And if it's rooted in irrationality and not measurable, you know, you're going to continue to sojourner down that road of irrational thinking and, and low self-esteem, but, you know, as opposed to dealing with the... Re and, and this is a statement, and it's not about relationships, and I, and I would tell, I told this person, you don't need a thousand men to love you. All you need is one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you are perfect for somebody. You don't mm -hmm. have to be perfect for everybody. For everybody. Let's talk about relationships for a minute because that is one of the uh, other things that I often hear in terms of exercising and building up uh, mental wellness is connect with other people. 
and that having a good relationship or good relationships doesn't necessarily mean romantic relationships, mm -hmm. but being able to connect with other people is another thing that helps us to exercise mental wellness. Isolation doesn't seem to be very good for people. This, these past two years doesn't seem to have uh, served us the best. It served us really good in terms of maybe not getting COVID. Uh, I shouldn't say maybe in terms of not getting COVID, but the isolation didn't seem to, uh, to really uh, promote mental wellness. Uh, and the, the thought and the read, some of the readings say that connecting with people really supports mental wellness. And, 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 and the relationship part, and that is so critical. I'm glad you brought it up because um, starting with yourself, knowing you, being committed to you, loving you, and knowing your journey. So when you know where you're going, when it, when it comes to relationships, you know what relationship, be it professionally, professional or personal that complement your journey. For example, I use this example all the time. If I'm going to, um, if I'm going to Georgia, and that means I'm jumping on 75 South. Yeah, 75 South. Okay. So I'm going 75 South. I got an idea, you know. So if someone says, hey, hey, Rob, could you uh, drop me off in Toledo, you know, or Cincinnati? That's on my route, and so I know immediately hearing that, I probably can do that and it won't take me off course. So that can complement my journey. Mm -hmm. But if someone says to me, since I know where I'm going, hey, Rob, could you take me to Lake Superior State? Absolutely not. That's heading north, going towards Canada. Mm -hmm. So automatically, but since I know where I'm going, I can automatically know what I, cannot, what I can and cannot connect myself to. Mm -hmm. in terms of my journey. So in terms of relationships, knowing where we are, who we are, where we're going and what we're doing, when we meet certain people, we probably know by the first couple conversations, oh, this person, I can't, because this person is not giving me that reciprocity or synergy that mm -hmm. I need in terms of a healthy relationship to based on my with. journey. Yeah, you know, that makes so. a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, absolutely. So we've been talking with uh, Robert, uh, Warmack. He is also a counselor here at Authority Health. If you or someone you know is looking to uh, talk more about mental health issues, mental wellness, please contact us at 313-824-1000. You can hit prompt number two and uh, schedule an appointment. You can also schedule an appointment at our website. Robert, it has been a pleasure talking with you about mental wellness. As always, knowledge is power. Robert, I'm gonna ha let you have the final word if you would like. Wow, um, uh, I have a term I, I like to use. Uh, um, you know, uh, you know, whatever we don't repair repeats itself. So make sure, you know, you know, all the all the spaces in our lives that that need to be healed or repaired, let's address them so they won't repeat themselves and it so it won't define, you know, you know, your destiny. So. All right. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the rest of the year.